straight up as possible. The year is 1997. In the heart of Nevada's Black Rock Desert, a jet-powered car shatters the sound barrier, becoming the fastest land vehicle in history. This is the story of the Thrust SSC, a machine so powerful, it changed the limits of human engineering forever. On this picture, we see Andy Green, a truly brave individual and a master of precision. He wasn't just driving a car, he was piloting a jet on wheels. And he was at the helm of the Thrust SSC, the incredible machine that would set a world record by breaking the sound barrier on land. In this moment, he's not just a driver, he's a pioneer, pushing the limits of what humans and machines can achieve together. But how has this idea even started? The 1990s was an era defined by bold innovations and daring dreams, where the limits of human ingenuity were tested against the raw power of nature. Speed records captured global attention, with the competitive world of land speed racing at the forefront a high-stakes battle where national pride and engineering brilliance collided. But here's the question, what if the boundaries of speed were not just meant to be pushed, but completely shattered? At the heart of this obsession was the British team, behind the Thrust SSC, a project led by Richard Noble, a former record holder who piloted the Thrust 2 to a blistering speed of 633 miles per hour back in 1983. But Noble wasn't satisfied with just a fast car. What if they could break the sound barrier on land? A feat no one had ever officially achieved. Now, picture this, the team needed a driver who could handle the unimaginable. Someone who was calm under pressure, focused, and fearless. Enter Andy Green, a Royal Air Force pilot with nerves of steel. What kind of person can drive a car faster than a jet plane? Someone who could manage not just speed, but the extreme forces that could easily tear a car apart at supersonic speeds. Green was the perfect choice, with a reputation for precision and unwavering control in extreme conditions. Behind them was a team of engineers driven by a singular goal, to build the world's first supersonic car. But this wasn't a simple engineering challenge. Breaking the sound barrier meant facing forces and pressures unlike anything seen before. Imagine the risk the car could easily disintegrate or spin out of control, becoming just another failed dream. The stakes couldn't be higher. And so, the stage was set in the desolate Black Rock Desert, where silence reigned and the horizon stretched endlessly. A place where the only thing that could break the quiet was the roar of a car pushing the boundaries of physics. What if the thrust SSC failed? What if this audacious plan to break the sound barrier became a tragic cautionary tale? Built primarily in the United Kingdom, in Farnborough in Hampshire, the thrust SSC was no ordinary car. It was crafted using materials like carbon fiber and titanium, the same used in aerospace and military applications. These weren't just design choices, they were survival tactics. Powered by two Rolls-Royce Spey turbofan engines, the kind used in military jets, the car was capable of generating an astounding 22,000 pounds of thrust. But what would it take to control this beast of a machine once it hit speeds over 700 miles per hour, 1,100 kilometers per hour? The car wasn't just a machine, it was a weapon against the laws of nature. Every second, it had to battle forces of wind, gravity, and friction. The team had to solve problems no one had ever even dreamed of before, like how to make a car stable at such extreme speeds. The project cost around 10 million pounds, 15 million dollars, a sum that could have easily been wasted if the mission failed. Private investors, sponsors, and public backing came together, including giants like Rolls-Royce, which provided the engines, and BP, who helped fund the development. It's a popular misconception that driving a land speed record in a straight line is about anchoring the steering wheel, planting your foot to the floor, and just waiting till you run out of fuel. If only it were that simple. The car moves around an awful lot. Any road car moves around a little bit, and it moves around more so as you go faster. When you go a lot faster, like 700 miles an hour faster, the car moves around a huge amount. The wheels are now skimming across the surface. The shock waves are generating uneven forces, gusts of crosswind. The car is sliding all over the track. In terms of doing a run in thrust SSC, big intakes very close to the ground. 
I put very little power on to start with to accelerate the car without sucking lumps of desert into the intakes. So initially just inching the throttle forward, letting the car roll slowly, progressively, around about 80% RPM on the engine, that's quite a low power setting, just letting the car accelerate no faster than a normal family saloon car would uh, pulling away from the lights. Do you think anyone would have bet on a car breaking the sound barrier on land just 20 years ago? Yet, with unwavering dedication and a never-give-up attitude, the Thrust SSC reached a staggering 763 miles per hour, 1,000 to 128 kilometers per hour, setting a new world land speed record that still stands. But here's where the story gets even more jaw-dropping. Imagine the forces at play when the car reached that speed. The wheels of the Thrust SSC spun at a mind-boggling 10,000 revolutions per minute, faster than the car's engines themselves. How do you design wheels that can withstand that? What about the extreme temperatures? The friction from moving that fast through the air meant that the car's surface heated up to over 800 degrees Fahrenheit, 427 degrees Celsius, hotter than boiling water. Yet it didn't melt, it didn't burn. The team had to push engineering to the limit just to keep the car intact. When Andy Green broke the sound barrier, it wasn't just a record, it was a sonic boom, a shockwave that echoed for miles. Think about that, a car producing a sound loud enough to be heard from space. Green, as calm and composed as ever, remarked, it's an incredible feeling. We're the first people to break the sound barrier on land, and we did it with a car. It's an amazing thing to be a part of, and it's a moment in history. You realize that you're not just driving a car, you're part of something that will go down in history. But here's the real kicker, this wasn't just a car driving fast. It was a jet-powered marvel built using space-age technology and aerodynamic principles borrowed from military aircraft. The thrust SSC didn't just push the envelope, it completely tore it apart, forcing everyone to rethink what was possible. In the end, the thrust SSC was a testament to human ambition and the will to challenge what's possible on Earth. A marriage of engineering, technology, and raw ambition it didn't just break records, it shattered the barriers of human achievement. Now, take a moment and think. What's the next impossible feat waiting to be conquered? The story of the Thrust SSC shows us that no dream is too fast, too far, or too impossible. Now, as a symbol of the relentless pursuit of progress and the human spirit's determination to conquer the impossible, both Thrust SSC and Thrust 2 are displayed at the Coventry Transport Museum in Coventry, England. Thank you for watching.